Uh, for our class today, we're uh, fortunate to have two speakers, Judy Messel and Helen Buelo. And Judy is a member of All Saints Lutheran Church in Albuquerque and has been active in Lutheran advocacy ministry for New Mexico since the mid 1990s. She taught at NMSU in Las Cruces and participated in border ministries there and now volunteers with three ecumenical and faith uh, advocacy groups concerned with hunger and the root causes of poverty. Ellen is a member of Holy Rosary Catholic Community in Albuquerque and has been active with Catholic Charities since 2006. She's a retired teacher, go teachers, from <laughs> Jefferson County, uh, Colorado, and she is a volunteer with uh, refugee youth and an anti-hunger advocate with Bread for the World and the Interfaith Hunger Coalition. So I want to welcome both of them and um, thank them for coming on. I don't know who's going first, Judith or uh, Ellen. Ellen, okay, um, yeah. great. Just a minute while I share my screen, please. And get this started. We are so happy to be here today with a congregation that is so involved in advocacy. Your webpage describes your outreach to relieve hunger, homelessness, and you have support for education and health care. As I said, I am Ellen and this is Judy, and we'll both be presenting today. Well, so I'll start with some basics for advocacy, and then Judy will expand advocacy to developing a good relationship with our legislators. Let me get started here. Let me see, sorry guys, okay. I wanna do this right, okay. Here we are, okay. There's good experience in advocacy here. And I hope that all of us get an opportunity at some time to share our testimonies in the New Mexico Legislature Committee hearings. Your confidence in life experience, along with the stories about how hunger affects families, go a long way to convince our lawmakers. Most of us remember something better when it's connected to a story. Why does your story matter? What's important is that it's a true story and that it's heartfelt. Your story builds credibility for your legislator as he or she stands on the floor of the House or Senate. Your testimony has weight. In the time, excuse me, guys. Your testimony has weight. In the time of COVID, we can't be there in person but we can be there virtually on Zoom. Sappers report that constituents gain the ear of legislatures more than they know. In-person during COVID is replaced now with a Zoom testimonial. It's highly effective with about 50% plus assurance that the lawmaker is listening. A handwritten letter with your story gains up to 70%, email up to 70%, and phone calls as well, up to 70% guarantee that that legislator is listening. And the staffers keep count of what you have said and they, they can report back to the legislature and that's usually how it goes. If you can give testimony on Zoom to a committee meeting, this is very effective advocacy. Now, here are some tips for effective testimony. Most of all, be prepared and be professional. Do your homework by observing how the committee works. For example, the House Bill 207 that we were talking about earlier, the Agriculture Bill, was sponsored by the Health and Human Services Committee. House Bill 207, of course, is the Omnibus Food, Hunger, and Agriculture Bill that promotes a wide collaboration from existing New Mexico agencies and nonprofits who work to eliminate food insecurity in New Mexico. Find out if you are a constituent of any legislature on that committee. 
Zoom in on a prior committee meeting to become familiar with this group. Study how you can promote that legislation. Do you, do you have a story? Excuse me, this is the problem. Do you have a story, a positive action? Do you belong to a group like Bread for the World, Evangelical Lutheran Advocacy Group of America, the ministry in New Mexico that works in partnership with the Presbytery of Santa Fe? Do you belong to the Interfaith Hunger Coalition? A place that has a history of success. Know where your bill is in the legislative process. What has already happened? And then send an email to the chair of the committee asking to give testimony on Zoom. This is necessary for the Senate in the House, in the uh, New Mexico legislature, but not for the House of Representatives. This year, we just showed up early and we put our name in to give testimony. Keep your request to one agenda item. Keep this very simple. Give backup examples. Sum it up and be brief and thank the committee for their time. Now I'm going to give an example of two different testimonies and I want you to evaluate which one would be more effective. Dear committee members, I am Ellen Bulow, a retired teacher. And one of my best memories is around grandparents day at school. Students love to show off their work and grandma and grandpa are more than happy to be there. The highlight is sharing lunch together. Sharing your day around food should be part of every child's life. Unfortunately for some students, their families are food insecure and that family meal isn't a given on many days. That's why I support House Bill 207 so all New Mexico families have food, food security. Thank you for giving me time to speak. Now here's another take. Dear committee members, I am Ellen Bulow, a retired teacher volunteering at Van Buren Middle School in the International District of Albuquerque. 70% of our students are food insecure and they receive a free lunch at school. The school invests in helping those students. They have a community garden where they grow vegetables. But even with the emergency food boxes, food vouchers, those students don't have a guaranteed dinner at home. Food security has a big payback in increased self-confidence and stronger New Mexico families. Supporting House Bill 207 would go a long way to solving food insecurity in New Mexico. Thank you for giving me time to speak. What was more effective about the second testimony? A specific school? The percentage of students receiving school lunch? positive actions taken by the school, payback with the students' self-confidence and stronger families, and also very being very specific about one bill and how that would go a long way to solve hunger insecurity in New Mexico. Most of all, follow up. Why do you need to follow up? This highlights your ask. It develops a relationship with your legislator. Next time, your staffer will remember you and give all your contact information, your address, who you are a constituent of, perhaps include a phone number, and of course your name, but be very specific in giving good feedback here. Most of us will be giving a highlight of what we talked about in an email. This is always good to send. This is how simple it can be. House bill, I have 207. Dear representative, thank you for giving me time to speak. I am your name and who I'm representing today. Here's my short story with examples, my ask, and then I include my contact information. And I know that the staffers keep track of how many emails come in in favor of a bill. So this is a very effective way of doing that. Now, remember to keep neutral. Anger has no place here. Be professional. Be passionate and persuasive. 
Be precise. Be prepared. History of the bill you're promoting. Be patriotic, stepping up for your citizens' responsibility. Be positive. Be proactive. You're developing a relationship. What are your legislature's priorities? And be a partner. You are the eyes and ears of your legislature in the community. And most of all, have fun. Go in with a positive attitude. This is you performing your patriotic duty. You are helping your fellow citizens. Your story will take flight. And now Judy is going to give us some more specifics on how we can carry this through with our legislatures. Judy? Thank you. I've got your back if you need it, Judy. Okay, I've got it, I think now. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, actually, I just wanted to start by saying I have tried some of Ellen's ideas when I did some testimony this past session, and it really helped, especially doing your homework, going to a committee meeting before the day you're going to testify and to see how they operate. It was really very helpful and to be very brief and, and very prepared, as she said. I'm going to transition now to talk about building relationships with our legislators to help end the hunger, help alleviate poverty in the ways that we can in New Mexico. And I'm going to mention the session a bit, but I'm also going to talk about what we can do before and after legislative sessions. Before the session, I recommend getting on an action alert list serve, and you probably already are on some. The ones that I have found very helpful are Lutheran Advocacy Ministry in New Mexico, New Mexico First Excellence, New Mexico Center on Law and Poverty, and New Mexico Voices for Children. And we do have those websites where it's fairly easy to figure out how to, to get on their um, mailing lists. During the session, these types of organizations will give you summaries of bills that need advocate support and a list of legislators to call or email. And um, oftentimes it's the members of a committee that is hearing the bill. And I'll have to tell you, sometimes I see those lists and I feel daunted because there are maybe 10 names on that list to call and maybe none of them is my legislator. Well, that's okay. They'll, they definitely will want to hear from us, regardless of which uh, district we're in. If you call legislators, you'll typically speak to their staff members and just be ready with your name. And they may ask your county or your street address or zip code. And then give them the number and title of the bill. For example, House Bill 207, the Food, Hunger, and Farm Bill. Then you're asked for the legislator to support, it's usually to support the bill or to vote a due pass in a committee hearing. And then finally, a thank you to the staffer and to the legislator. And um, I find that once I get on a roll, making these calls, it goes pretty fast because those staffers are good at what they're doing and they're ready for us. Expect a good experience. Sometimes you have a very um, nice little brief interaction with, with a staffer that is very pleasant. Then after the session, I have four thoughts about what you can do to help continue building that relationship with your legislators. And you probably have a million more. But these are some that, that I've tried. One is after the session, just sit down and write a note to your legislator, your state representative and your state senator, just to thank you for their public service. Keeping in mind that New Mexico is the last, I believe, legislature in the country that is a citizen legislature. So our legislators do not get paid. They're not salaried for their service they get a per diem when the session is ongoing. So a thank you, I think goes a long way. 
Second, attend an interim committee meeting. So much of the work of the legislature happens in these meetings between sessions. And for us as advocates in the areas that we're interested in, the two very important ones are the Legislative Finance Committee and the Legislative Health and Human Services Committee. This last one being the key to legislation on food insecurity. And, you know, we just keep, keep in touch with the legislature through their website to find out when these committees will be meeting. And probably they'll be on Zoom. Um, or otherwise, we used to travel to them, you know, whether it's in Roswell or Las Cruces or wherever the meeting is, was held, uh, we would go. Third, have coffee with your legislators. I can tell you this is fun. In the spring or summer, you might get together with some fellow parishioners from your church um, who live in the same district and just invite your legislators for coffee. We've done it one at a time, uh, one coffee with the rep, our rep and one coffee with our senator. And the coffees can be virtual for now, but later uh, a local coffee establishment in your district is a nice place to meet. And um, while you're meeting with them, you might see if your legislators are part of the legislature's hunger caucus. And I'll tell you, Ellen Bulow was helpful, very instrumental in getting the legislature to set up a hunger caucus. If they would like to be involved, they can contact their colleague, Representative Joanne Ferrari of Sonia Ana County, and then we have her contact information there. And finally, have your congregation host a reception of thanks. This requires some planning and some work, but it, the reward is just great. I'm gonna go down to this little clip art picture um, to show you a representative um, image of what it can be like. I've done about five of, at least five of these receptions, uh, both in Doniana County and up here in Bernalillo and Sandoval counties. But here's the deal. You just figure out who the legislators are who represent members in your congregation and then invite them to a non-partisan gathering hosted by your church. For example, on a summer or fall evening, you can gather in a parishioner's backyard and the focus is on thanking the legislature, legislators for their public service. Um, use the time for parishioners and legislators to get to know one another in a welcoming, relaxed setting that you've arranged. Give each legislator an opportunity to say a few words. And this is delightful because what you'll hear, at least what we've heard, is a lot of bipartisanship. They, they like to reflect on times when they worked across the aisle with each other. It's just, I don't know, it's just a, it's just a great evening. Um, this is not necessarily the time that you would specifically ask them to take a policy action, but do have a list of your social justice concerns available to hand out. And they're usually very happy to take those with them. But just focus on good feelings, fun, and getting to know one another in the interest, of course, of alleviating poverty in this state. And um, so with that, I will end and say thank you so much for, for letting us do this. Um, the Lutheran Advocacy Ministry in New Mexico does have a partnership with the Presbytery of Santa Fe. So we do have a close relationship to you. And I was just going to say, if you ever do a reception like this, you might ask the Lutheran Advocacy Director, Kurt Rager, to attend. I bet he would. And he's, he's great. He, he, help, he will help make that event really sparkle. Um, the other thing I was going to say is this building relationships with legislators um, gave me a big surprise once. I, at a coffee with my state senator, I suggested, I, I didn't suggest, I actually mentioned a couple of books that I had found very helpful. 
And um, she took note of that. And the books were Viking Economics, How the Scandinavians Got It Right by George Lakey and former state senator Dee Dee Feldman, who has written Another Way Forward, which you all may have read about grassroots progress in New Mexico. And that state senator, even though we don't share political beliefs, at some point later texted me that she had read those books. And I was, I was amazed. So we can have more influence perhaps than we think. So with that, I will uh, again say thank you and we're available for any questions you might have. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy and Ellen. Um, I love this presentation because it is so usable, so user-friendly and also very succinct. I mean, it doesn't go on and on and on, but really holds our attention. And, and thank you with the excellent ideas that you have provided us. Um, I wanted to start out just asking one question. As, as Chair of Mission and Social Justice for our committee, um, it's been, it was really difficult this year to get people to write Bread for the World letters. And we do have an e-news that goes out every day in, during the week and tried to encourage people to do that and gave them the information of who to uh, write to and their contact information. Um, do you, and, and we've had a little trouble in the past couple years getting these letters written. For a while, I think that letter writing was more of a common thing 10 years ago than it is now. Uh, and we have encouraged people to do email letters also. Um, do you have any suggestions about how to build some enthusiasm for this type of advocacy? This is a conversation Judy and I have between us all the time. <laughs> we were just talking about getting people involved the other day and some of the difficulties. I, I, I really, I'm from a Catholic congregation and I really, I would love to have Mission Sunday. I would love to have that time to get up and talk to people about Bread for the World and what it does. And I've known, isn't it First Presbyterian here in uh, Albuquerque? They do that. They, they, ha they have a mission Sunday and they get up and they talk about bread for the world. They talk about what it's done, the success it has. And uh, they, they are successful in getting people then to write letters. Another group, I think another Presbyterian church, I'm pretty sure, Judy, it's the one up there off of San Mateo. And uh, what, what is that one? I'm trying to think. St. Andrews. Yeah, St. Andrews. Oh. St. Andrews actually does plays. They have little skits that they do for the congregation. And they, they will act out a skit and, and people get involved in the skit. These are, these are you, you lucky people that have that time to talk to your congregations. That is so effective right there. And then doesn't hurt. I've done this. I've gotten Starbucks coffee. I'm desperate. I'll get Starbucks coffee and donuts, put them in the gathering space and say, hey, you know, do you have your, your laptop with you? Have a phone with you? This is all it takes. I have signage everywhere, simple as it can be, uh, you know, to, to do a letter. So these are, these are some of the ideas I have. Judy, I'm sure you have a lot more. Uh, what, what we do at All Saints is we have a woman who does a little skit for us. She'll, she'll take the bread information for that campaign and she'll do a little skit. And then our pastor um, lets us perform it during worship service, uh, usually at the beginning. Or sometimes we get the whole message. We get the whole message time and we pl play the video that uh, bread provides. And then we go to the fellowship hall between services and like Ellen said, uh, we have stamps, we have stationery, we have envelopes, we have the labels for our members of Congress. Um, we have sample letters of what to write and we all sit around and write letters. And that seems to have helped a lot. I've, I've done postcards. 
And I, I say, I take these directly to the staffers, which I do. Uh huh. And the postcard is, I say, just put down one idea about how you think hunger can be alleviated, but be sure to put your name, address, and information on there. That, that is pretty effective because when you go to the staffers and you talk to them, you have something to talk about. Say, in my congregation, we're off the West Mesa here in Albuquerque. This is a big problem. Hunger is a big issue. This is what we're doing to try to alleviate it. These are some personal notes from people in your district and they listen. So that's, it's good to make an appointment with a staffer before you go in. I've been very successful in getting Heinrich's office. And also when Michelle Lujan Grisham was there, I had children do paper plates and decorate those for hunger. And she loved those and brought those in. And um, I'm sure Ben Ray Lujan would be, that would be yours, right? Ben Ray Lujan is your representative. Mm -hmm. I am sure that would be very effective, but make an appointment, go into the office, have your letters and your pictures, whatever it is available, and just sit down and talk about your, your efforts to alleviate hunger and what people, these are personal stories that they can use on the floor of the Senate or house, yeah. That leads me to another question. Um, do you feel as, as effective to talk to local staffers representing our um, US Congress men and women um, as it is to send directly to Washington DC? What, what do you feel is, is the most effective? Judy, go for it. Okay, um, I would say it's very important to talk to the local people. I've had an experience um, of, of wanting something from Senator Udall at one point, and I happen to know the staffer in Las Cruces better than I knew people up here. And so I actually visited her and she took great notes and she, of course, meets consistently and often with the staff in Washington. And she was able to convey my concerns and, and really get me a wonderful result. So I would say the, it's very important to cultivate the local people as well as those serving in Washington. You, you could also set up a Zoom with the staffer in Washington. It's important that they know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and also don't forget the town halls. I know that Senator Ben Ray Lujan has had some great, I've, I've attended his town halls. He's not my Senator, but I've attended his town halls and brought up and heard people bring up ideas and those are very effective. And if you can't get your time in, there's always a staffer with him that you can talk to, yeah. It's more, it's really important to make it personal, to be as personable as you can and to let them know that you want to have a relationship with them. And if you have some great information, be sure you follow up and get that to them as soon as possible. You are their eyes and ears on the ground. Um, let me ask anyone else attending, do you have any questions for Ellen or Judy? I just want to say how uh, amazing it is to be in New Mexico. I came from Ohio and Illinois before that. Um, and to have such a access to the, the people on the floor uh, that are making decisions to, I mean, if we only live in New Mexico and never know any other state, we may think this is the way it is and it isn't. And so I'm just so thankful to have this kind of opportunity. So thank you both for what you're doing and helping us to learn more about it. Harry has worked a lot with um, New Mexicans to prevent gun violence and as an active leader in that group and of course has um, testified in front of the legislature um, in that area of, of his concern, of all our concerns actually. Um, I wanted to ask a, a question um, that has come up in our church and um, People say, well, the legislators, they don't really listen. They don't need to hear from me. What, what's one person's opinion? Um, and so it's, again, a little hard to convince them. Or they say, well, uh, we've had this issue in our church of people saying it, church should not be political. 
Um, <laughs> how do you address those, those uh, naysayers? I would like to take this if that's okay, Judy. Mm -hmm. All through Bible, you look at any scripture, their social justice is embedded in that scripture. So, I mean, and, and I, I, I don't know, are you, are anybody here uh, going for that new uh, app? Uh, what was the name of that? that? That's talking about the scriptures. I'm trying to think I have it on my phone. I don't have it, but it, 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 you you look at the life of Jesus. And that's what it's steady. And and po politics is everywhere. This was back in the Roman times, and he's he's doing deliberate actions, like when he healed the paralytic on the Sabbath. He was he did that right in front of Pharisees, and he says sometimes you just have to stir it up a little bit. That's in the, this app, and it's true. You go all the way through that, and I'm with the Catholic community and we have the seven principles of social justice and i'm sure every every congregation has those they're right in your congregation and if we are to be christians we are called to take care of our brothers and sisters it's not a one-way ticket to god it's involving all of our community going there there are just so many reasons that you can give them just from your church's outlook and 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 then in terms of my opinion has no, no weight. How many times have I heard a, a legislator get up and they will talk about a personal story? I mean, this is true nationally in DC. You will hear somebody's personal story when they're giving testimony for passing of a bill. They'll say, so this person had these issues. They were a single mom. They couldn't afford anything and SNAP benefits would be helpful, but they make that very specific. And that came from a constituent giving them an example of a story. Mm -hmm. There's that. And the other one is they don't think they have any influence. You people have the Santa Fe Food Depot there in New Mexico, up there in Santa Fe. I'm on their advocacy committee as an adjunct from the Albuquerque Interfaith Hunger Coalition. That is a powerful group to to go if you're with hunger, that's a great group to be connected with because you not only have your voice, but you're combining your voice with that of the citizens of nine counties in Northern New Mexico. Though I, I just don't see any excuse to get out of this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would add this. Sometimes the point to start is charity. Most people in the congregations understand and are enthused about providing charity to people. And then if you can um, gently move into looking for the root causes of poverty and advocating um, on behalf of people that it, and, and emphasize of course, that it's always nonpartisan what we do. It's always right. nonpartisan. I don't even, because I'm sort of a known advocate with Lutheran Advocacy Ministry, I don't even contribute to uh, campaigns. I've registered as a nonpartisan, uh, not no party listed, and things like that. I mean, I, I'm not recommending everyone go to that extreme. In fact, I, I asked my husband to contribute to candidates in his own name <laughs> for me. Um, but you know what I'm saying is is to, to be scrupulously nonpartisan in our approach, and that has been somewhat persuasive to some people in our congregations. But we hear we hear those things too. Oh yeah, and the other point is talk to your pastor, take them out for coffee, on, just talk to your pastor about your passion for this, and see if that can be announced from the pulpit. It, you know, I, I am very fortunate. I have a pastor that uh, preaches this from the pulpit. The minute that George Floyd had that incident, the next Sunday, he talked about racism directly. And we had any number of homilies on racism and every mass, every time he does anything, we're praying for the end of racism in whatever, whatever form it has. But having the leader in your church actually talking about this from the pulpit is a huge advantage, you know, just and to we, try to get. 
Yeah. We do have that support Good. from our pastor who's Good. on this Zoom call today, too. I should have introduced him, but uh, he spoke just a minute ago. Um, the I noticed in, in the readings that you had, uh, there were nine biblical themes for Bread for the World. And uh, mm -hmm. just to reiterate what you said, the, the last one was God has a role for government to pay to play in the protection and development of people. So I think um, what you have said and uh, uh, how, as far as um, the scripture supporting the issues of social justice is, is right on. So thank you for the, those comments. Um, one of the things that I've always, wondered about, and, and you mentioned this, I think, Ellen, in your presentation, is what is the most effective way? You, you said 70% email, 70% phone, 70% um, positivity, I guess it is. Um, and would you suggest personal visits over all of those oh, um, if that can be arranged? I always feel as if the legislators here, particularly in the 30 day session, are so slammed with visitors and, um, you know, just very limited time. Um, so what what do you have to say about that, Ellen and Judy? I, I, I believe I, I took my legislature out for coffee as well. I met, met her downtown Albuquerque and I was, my interest was in trying to get her to join the hunger caucus. So I was giving her any, I, I, she said, oh, you're in Northwest Albuquerque, right? That's really affluent or whatever. I don't know, but it is. I mean, when you think about it, we're all citizens. And I tried to get her because the governor had personally chosen her. And she said, well, my emphasis is law, the law. And I, I was trying to just talk to her, just share with her, finding, you know, why would, why would she be interested in hunger relief? And I, I mentioned another co-legislator, Melanie Stansbury, they're about the same age. And she said, oh, Melanie takes that on. But my, the whole purpose of the visit was to tell her we had this in common, tell her that as her constituent, I really was interested in this. I did take her out for coffee. And I had another member of my congregation with me that was having coffee. And it, it was, I thought that was probably the most effective. And I followed up too later on. Remember me, here I am, this is my ask. <laughs> so I think person, nothing beats meeting them in person. However, don't underestimate the power of an effective email, the power of an effective phone call. You, not all of us can, can meet with somebody, but and in between sessions, especially, I've done, I've done testimony for the Health and Human Services Committee on hunger a number of times, and they get to see your face in front of their whole group, their committee meeting. I've come up to Santa Fe for that, but they meet in different areas around the state, don't they, Judy, sometimes? Yeah. The committees, yeah. The, the interim committees. Yeah, they do, yeah. During the session, when we can get back into the Capitol, it's always good to stop by their offices of your legislators and uh, oftentimes you're not going to see them they're busy but they have these little their staff have these cards and then you just write them a note you know let them know you're there you're there and, and you care and you're interested in in something the food depot up in santa fe is actually arranging some personal uh visits from legislatures they did this before COVID. i think you really should get a hold of cherry hooper and ask her when when legislatures are coming in, they'll have they'll have a day that they may come in and be part of that group when we can start meeting again. But like I say, you have a very effective advocacy group for hunger right there in Santa Fe with the food depot. How effective do you think letters to the editor in the local newspaper are as far as stirring up others to follow? I, I, that's probably a hard thing to judge, but uh, what, what do you feel about that? I have heard from another advocacy group that staffers are charged with looking at those 
newspapers and clipping somehow, probably virtually or, or online. Um, yeah, they look at those. They look at what their constituents are writing and that gets reported back at least as a part of a database right. to your member of Congress or your state legislator. No, very good question because I've just recently learned that this is something they do. In the Santa Fe, New Mexican, the, the food depot has Jerry Fairbrother and Catherine Kastner who both have extensive, uh, extensive uh, work in advocacy and also research. And they have written a series of articles for the Santa Fe, New Mexican. And we were wondering how effective that was. So we had a press conference with New Mexico first and I represented the Interfaith Hunger Coalition and the religious groups on that. And who came but the main guy from the Santa Fe New Mexican because we had been running those series. Mm -hmm. And I think recently hunger appeared on the front page of the paper. That's what I heard that, that, that got that much interest. So it may take time, but those editorials were going in and you have any number, you can probably research them if you haven't read them. I helped Jerry with one on college hunger and there's one I don't know if they a one on they, they have a committee on gleaning and also on food waste. So we're going to have a presentation with the Interfaith Hunger Coalition coming up here. When is that date? June. It's in June. And we're going to be featuring food waste. And that's Carolyn, that, that'll be Carolyn Kastner and Jerry Fairbrother out of Santa Fe for that Santa Fe Food Depot. It, I, you know, there's if you start small, start small try to get an editorial in, try to get something in the paper, but start small and then just keep at it, being very persistent. And who knows, you could have a press conference, lots of things can happen from your efforts. It's just important to keep consistent with that. I think Harry could address that too, as far as the work that the New Mexico, New Mexicans Against the um, Gun Violence have, uh, done. I, I have watched that organization develop over the years um, from, you know, just a small group of people who felt it was really important to speak out. And um, Harry, could you want to comment on that? No, it's just amazing from the day after Sandy Hook, where a few of us got together in one place in El Dorado, another one group got together at the plaza. And we came together a few months later knowing we're doing the same work to where it is now, yeah. where there are amazing volunteers and everything you're saying, Ellen and Judy are exactly right about how to um, deal with uh, the, the issues and, and uh, treat each other well. And we always said from the beginning, take the high road. You never want to get involved with anything that's adversary to, to another person to talk down to them or or whatever, always treat them with respect. And we've done that. And uh, it's been a real learning experience through the years and you've helped us understand that even more today. Um, but there's, nothing, there's no greater power than um, regular citizens uh, you know, getting involved. Um, because time and again, we have been told by legislators that they listen to us and not the national groups that come in. Because they know that we are local that we know what's how things work here in New Mexico, and it goes a lot better that way, and we are better received that way. So, uh, amazing group, um, and that's where all these groups come in. They, they're all amazing, uh, and so thank you for that work. My husband had the opportunity to um, sit in on a committee um, when one of the gun bills was being discussed, and he sat next to a man who obviously was pro. NRA and pro gun. And as they talked during committee breaks or before the committee started, they found that they did have some commonalities um, about locking up guns uh, and some other areas that they agreed on. And, and I think um, that's an important growing opportunity too, to recognize that um, someone on who you think is on the other side of the issue is may have something in common with you. And I think we need to do a lot more of that kind of talking in our churches in our among our friends about many of the issues that are troubling us today. 
Any other questions for Ellen or Judy? Well, then I I think we will draw to a close. But we want Esther to... has a question. Esther. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you. Esther, please. I just um, would like it if you would repeat the first proverb that you had in your presentation, Ellen. First, on the, the very on the... first screen that you showed. The, the very hope, first one? The oh, Hopi yeah. proverb. Let me get that up there again. <laughs> okay. I will find that. I have it right here because I was uh, interested in it too. It says, those that tell stories rule the world. Uh, the Hopi proverb. Is that the one you were yeah, referring that's the to? One. Hopi American Indian proverb. Yes. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> so well, once again, thank you both for spending the time with us and, and giving us some uh, really concrete helpful information. The, the part that I found the most interesting in, was the follow-up, which is something that I had just never thought about or considered. Now, I, when I do call my legislator and talk to a staffer, I always thank them and thank their um, legislator for the work they're doing. But to um, go through the year and uh, approach them in different ways and, and to do the follow up and thank yous, I think is is a, a new piece for me. So thank you very much for um, your excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. We, 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 are, we were happy because there's such rich ground here. You're starting in advocacy. Not always do I, do I get to talk to people who have rich ground already where seeds sown. But this is a privilege, really a privilege to be here today. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you, too. You know, in the 90s, we, the Lutheran Advocacy Ministry had a state um, uh, conference in your church. And we usually have it in Albuquerque, but we had it in Santa Fe that year in your church. And I remember the Reverend Donald Wilson was our speaker. Oh, he was fabulous. And I remember one of the things he said was, um, the work of the church is to serve the poor. And I've kept that motto with me. That's my proverb. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.